Silliman University, a prime Christian school where education builds competence, character, and faith in an environment of serenity, inclusivity, and natural beauty. The Silliman story began with one determined man, one dedicated educator couple, and one supportive community who, in their respective roles, helped build one educational institution that has grown into one of the best in the Philippines. The determined man was Dr. Horace Brinsmade Silliman, a retired businessman and philanthropist who lived in Coho City, New York State. Over a hundred years ago, in 1899, he requested the Presbyterian Board of Foreign Missions in Manhattan to open an industrial school for boys in the Philippines, in a location south of Manila. He would not take no for an answer, and gave an initial fund of 10,000 U.S. dollars to set up the school he had envisioned, to educate young people he would never meet in a faraway land that he would never see. The two dedicated educators were Dr. David Sutherland Hibbard and his wife, Laura, a missionary couple that the board commissioned to establish and operate the suggested school. They were asked to choose a location in any of three provinces south of Manila. These are Cebu, Zamboanga, or Iloilo. Call it destiny. But while the couple was in Cebu, someone suggested that they do a side trip to nearby Dumaguete. They came, they saw, and were conquered, so to speak. The idyllic seaside town, the friendly and healthy people, and the able community leaders made the couple decide to set up the school in Dumaguete, which became its supportive host and partner community. Silliman University is now more than 117 years old. It is headed by its 13th president, Dr. Betty Cernal McCann. Installed in 2018, she is the first woman president following 12 male leaders, three Americans, and nine Filipinos. Granted autonomous status by the Commission on Higher Education, or CHED, Silliman University is a CHED Center of Excellence for Nursing, information technology, and teacher education, as well as a center of development for biology, medical technology, and marine sciences. Silliman University has been granted institutional reaccreditation by the Association of Christian Schools, Colleges, and Universities Accrediting Council, Incorporated. Institutional accreditation or reaccreditation is the highest accreditation award ACSCU can give 
to an educational institution. Silliman's offering of quality Christian education ranges from early childhood to postgraduate level. Its student population of 10,000 counts among the best performing students in the Philippines, and Silliman graduates are among the most sought after professionals in the private or public sector. In the Visayas region, Silliman University is a recognized leader in community service, a trusted partner of government and non government organizations. It has pioneered several community projects in healthcare, agriculture, information technology, Christian ministry and outreach, law and justice, governance, youth development, calamity and disaster response, education and training, service learning, and environmental protection. Silliman graduates have established their reputation beyond the Philippine shores. They are valued members of health, business, engineering, science and technology, education, communication, research, and other organizations in North America, Europe, Asia, and Australia. Several Silliman alumni have distinguished themselves through the decades, excelling and leading in their respective fields. Notable Silimanians include Senator Lorenzo G. Tevez in public administration, DepEd Secretary Leonor Mantoles Briones in civil service, Dr. Quilopes Caballo in music, Dr. Julio C. in business, Dr. Angel C. Alcala in the biological and environmental sciences, Drs. Edilberto and Edith Tiempo in Literature, Director Eddie Romero in Filmmaking and the Arts, Dr. Romeo Ariniego in Medicine, and Dr. Rolando del Carmen in Legal Education, to name a few. Silliman aims to provide whole person education to every student through the interaction of five learning venues that it dubs as the five C's of Silliman education the classroom, the church, the cultural center, the athletic courts, and the community. The classroom includes the university's academic programs, facilities, faculty, and methods of instruction. Silliman University's 19 colleges, institutes, and schools offer some 140 programs, most of which have attained the highest level of accreditation from PAASCO and ACSCU, two accrediting bodies recognized by CHED. The Silliman faculty is an assembly of highly qualified professionals and academics whose expertise is recognized not only in the country, but also in North America, Europe, and other parts of the world. Visiting, exchange, and adjunct professors from the university's international partners bring in global knowledge. Silliman faculty do not only teach, they model and they mentor. The church is the heart of the Silliman campus and Christian faith is the foundation of Silliman education. Beyond developing her knowledge and skills, the student at Silliman develops her capacity to serve fellow human beings. Activities for nurturing the faith, worship, fellowship, and service engage the student year-round. Nevertheless, church activities are designed and organized observing spiritual inclusivity and respect for differences in religious persuasions. The courts refer to athletic activities and competitions. Physical activity is deemed as important as mental activity at Silliman. Facilities for different ball games, swimming, contact sports, archery, and rowing have been developed and opportunities arranged to explore students' potentials. Several Silimanians have ruled the courts in their time, such as Marc Javier, the lone Filipino male archer at the Beijing Olympics. Archers Jennifer Chan and Lisa Ignalaga, and ninth grader Nicole Tagle, long jumper Simeon Toribio. Silliman has long been a leader of arts development in the country. Its programs in music, dance, theater, and visual and literary arts have produced some of the best artists in the Philippines. The Silliman University National Writers' Workshop, the longest-running literary workshop in Asia, has been ongoing for almost 60 years. Its founders, Drs. Edilberto and Edith Tiempo, are two celebrated Filipino writers in the English language. In recognition of Silliman's leadership in the development of culture and the arts, generous donors have gifted the university with cultural facilities such as the Claire Isabel McGill Luce Auditorium, dubbed as the Cultural Center of the South, and the Ariniego Arts Gallery. 
Social inclusivity and continuing involvement in the larger community characterize Silliman education. Students are challenged to test theories and principles through actual community work in service learning, an approach that combines reflection with participation in community-based projects to achieve specific learning outcomes. It enables the student to develop a more integrated understanding of theory, practice, and values. Students apply the service learning approach for community-based learning in business development, education, health care, legal management, disaster response, and environmental advocacy. Silliman University promotes a service learning approach to provide quality social engagement between the student and the community to develop critical thinking, civic responsibility, and leadership, as well as to strengthen the values of service and compassion. Come to Silliman. If you're seeking opportunities for growth and excellence in every dimension of your life, be enriched by its holistic and responsive educational program with a Christian orientation. Find yourself in a learning community of highly qualified faculty, dedicated staff, supportive alumni, and exciting co-learners. Feel close to God in the beauty and splendor of the Silliman campus. Silliman offers education for total human development, an education that is fulfilled in three ways. One, it promotes the convergence of knowledge from various disciplines and areas of learning. Two, it encourages inclusiveness as well as diversity, the acceptance of everyone who comes through Silliman's portals, regardless of culture, class, or creed. And three, it deepens the spirit of service and widens Silliman students' sense of responsibility to embrace their community, their country, and their planet. Silliman University. Let us all put ourselves in the presence of the Lord, loving Heavenly Father. We come to you this hour asking for your blessing and help us as we gather together in this wedding. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work in online distance learning with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm despite this new normal. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. Help us to work together and encourage each other towards excellence. We ask that we motivate and inspire each other on what we share today to reach higher and further to the best we can be, even amidst these challenging times. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Let me share my screen first. Okay, so a uh, good afternoon. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to another session of tips for learning, especially on student engagement. Um, uh, we are pleasantly surprised, but very grateful that uh, we have a lot of participants from other schools. Um, actually, we're well represented from Luzon. We have um, no less than Dr. Bye Bye from Miriam College. And then we have people from uh, teachers from Baisu and other um, um, universities and schools in um, the Visayas, and we also have, I also saw from the chat um, that we are, we also have teachers from uh, Father Saturnino Orius School University. Uh, that was the last, uh, we, we were there the last time, that was the, our last travel before this pandemic because we attended our, um, we attended um, conference in there. So welcome everyone. Um, by the way, this was supposedly an in-house webinar because we will be featuring some of the um, feed, uh, some of the modules or some of the features that uh, our learning management system possess that would encourage or would um, help us in our our um, student to content engagement. So, but then again, everyone is welcome because we realize this could be helpful to everyone else. Uh, this could, this might be a thing or two could be uh, grasped from this and could be useful in your uh, mode of learning, be it online distance learning, it could be modular, or it could be blended learning. Um, so um, we hope that this could be of help to you. Um, um, our major, go major goal here for everyone is uh, for the betterment of student engagement against this uh, situation. No? So by the way, let me start first with uh, a brief discussion of uh, what student engagement is. So we start with how it, it should be uh, defined. Uh, it's multifaceted in a sense that it includes behavioral engagement, which is which focuses on participation in academic, social, and co-curricular activities. And then it also um, focuses on emotional engagement, which is uh, engaging focus on the extent and nature of positive and negative reactions to teachers, classmates, academics, and of course, school. And lastly, cognitive engagement, which focuses on students' level of investment in learning. Okay, now we have here, we have here the, the basic types of engagement. So, um, for, for this afternoon, we will be dealing more of the learner to content engagement, which, which is about learners engagement and interaction with a subject matter. Now, for learner to teacher engagement, um, it is extremely valuable for online learning and leads to student engagement. And it is essential to build activities that enhance um, engagement and assist students in feeling connected and can create a dynamic um, sense of community. And then we have, of course, learner to learner engagement. So in learner to learner, engagement. Um, learners thought that they have more interaction with their peers and instructors using video conferencing most of the times no? um, in this time of pandemic or, or chatting in synchronous activities, discussion boards, and even in asynchronous activities, you find ways and means for them to be able to collaborate. And then um, from Martin and Bolliger in 2018, they highly recommend the use of a web-based application, such as maybe everyone is familiar with this one, uh, Google Apps, uh, even our own um, social, uh, yeah, our social media, our blogs, they could be helpful in uh, uh, learner to learner engagement. While utilization of social media and blogs in online courses provide an opportunity to enhance also engagements through social interaction. But there's more to student engagement. So we have here, um, 
Okay. So we have here four more well, with the first one, learner engagement with the learning environment. So whatever learning environment we, we have now, we are using in our schools, there is that um, engagement, student engagement with that one. So this is about adaptable access interaction. So most of the times for now, it would be our mobile devices, our Wi-Fi access, and even our innovative use of study space, um, however you used it in your school. And then um, the next two are actually offshoots of um, learner to content engagement because there are learner engagement with assessment activities, which means also this is about choices learners have in relation to the fulfillment of their assessment requirements. And then feedback, no? So there's learner engagement with feedback. This is about their choices to, in relation to uh, access the feedback on their learning as an assessment activity. So how fast are we? To give feedback to our students, that's actually one type of engagement no? or engaging activity. Learner engagement with the institution. So this one, uh, this is about the, the learners' um, um, choices in, uh, in relation to their engagement with the services that your school uh, offers. No? For example, um, our virtual virtual library our um we have um like a guidance and counseling virtual office and even your own offices within your uh within your college or within your department so okay so before i start with a learner to content engagement tips no um let me just give you or share to you a poll Okay, so uh, this might be some of you might be, be um, it some of you might not be familiar with with some of the features because there are ones that were really picked out from um, from our learning management system, but some are actually also uh, quite um, quite um, common and popular. So kindly uh, kindly click. Um, what activity resource in your LMS or in your learning platform that is, do you usually utilize? Okay, so let's give a few more seconds for that one so that we could get a good uh, grasp of um, uh, answers, okay? Okay. Okay, so I'll do. Okay, so I will share the results so that everyone would see it. Okay, so if if you if you see on the screen, it's video and YouTube format. So um, most of the times we have like a go to uh, video sharing site, and most of uh, yeah, YouTube is very popular for that one, uh, which is um, a very good answer because usually it's what we can use when it comes to even uploading our own uh, pre-recorded lectures that could, could also be done in YouTube. And then we have uh, files, PDF, PowerPoint, yes. And then what is the next? We have lesson. So actually, lesson is a lesson here in our in our learning management system. And we have assignments, yes, lessons and assignments. Um, in our learning management system, it's a feature. So later on, I will show you or at least give you give you an image of how it looks like. No. So um most of the times, yes, we especially for most asynchronous uh, sessions, we give assignments and then um, lessons would be in the form of, yeah, it will be a whole package of the topics that you have to uh, deliver through whatever uh, whatever um, delivery mode you have. It's uh, ODL or maybe a modular or blended learning. Okay. So. We here at Silliman, we had our own, uh, we had our own um, survey, no? We, it's like also a, a, a survey so that we could improve on um, student engagement. So we started with um, the teachers, no? So um, in the study of Palama et al in 2021, it's actually very fresh because it was just from um, two weeks ago. Um, it was uh, found out, no, it was found out that files, assignment, and the URL features of our learning management system are the top three activity 
support resource um, that they have been utilizing in Seoul now for our teachers in senior high school and college that was um, that was data from the second semester of 2020-21. Okay, so um, this implies that the teacher's choice of instructional material materials are still similar to the IEMs that they provide their students during face-to-face. -face, right? uh, files usually um, in the form of maybe a handout or something, and then assignments because that would be like um, yeah, the typical assignment that we have. Activities uh, are also presented. Uh, even synchronous activities are also presented through the assignment feature in Seoul. And then, of course, URL, instead of going to the physical library and just giving you um, professors giving you like the, the chapter of the pages, this time they are already capable of giving you the URL so that you could have like not just the not just the um, maybe the pages or the whole the whole um, document for that one. So, so there you go. And then for how about for our students? No, for our students, um, I and Sir Dave of the of the Seoul office, we also uh, conducted the study for the student side, and then we had it uh, gauged in the level of usefulness. How do they see this sets of um, um, uh, teaching and learning resources in Seoul? So. Once again, it's files in PDF format. They find it the most useful for the students. And then chatting, okay? So there, it's chatting there. And then, yes, we have like our own chatting device or feature for each classroom, no? for each classroom. And then there's announcements and notifications. So announcements and notifications go directly, whatever is announced in the virtual class, classroom, it goes directly to their um, SU email. So uh, they, it's like sent to them twice. No? And um, so from this study, it was seen that students prefer learning resources that highly support the asynchronous method of teaching and learning. Yeah because it could just be placed in there, they could just download it. And then only files are considered part of the learner to content engagement. And it suggests a passive way of engaging with content. So um, this is actually one of the triggers why we have to do upskilling. So uh, for, for those, uh, my colleagues out there who, who is with us, who are with us in, in, this, um, in this webinar, try to see or uh, visit our MySoul training course uh, so that you would be able to access the links on the training schedules for what, what I will be discussing today. Okay, also from uh, Martin and Bolliger in 2018, um, student to con content interaction can occur while watching. So watching instructional videos. So it was a good, um, it was a good uh, projection uh, earlier from that, uh, that, that poll that we had because instructional videos are actually is actually the 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 leading when uh, the leading um, learning material or resource when it comes to uh, student engagement and then interacting with multimedia and searching for information. So simply googling is actually searching for information could be could be something that could be um, that could um, motivate. Uh, student engagement. Both synchronous and asynchronous delivery are seen as effective options that help online students in accessing content for critical interaction. And then interactive instructional materials and well thought out assessments. No, let me point that out. Well thought out assessments because I was also asked uh, yesterday about uh, assess assessments and cheating. No, in, we encourage students to content uh, these types of um, materials encourage students to content engagement and real world application of projects that enhances subject mastery and critical thinking skills is one strategy related to fostering, again, this type of engagement. So students found a variety of activities made them feel engaged, no? including ones that we offer in our LMS. So a closer look to learner to content engagement. So what is it? No. So it's about learners engagement and interaction with the subject matter in ways that suits them, their styles and approaches to studying and its time, 
place and pace. Okay. Another one is it's more this is a more practical definition is the process of intellectually interacting with content meaning there should be some uh, higher order thinking skills maybe uh, uh, embedded within learner to content engagement or at least would stir that um, higher order thinking skills of ours which can change a learner's understanding and perspectives so can interactive ims or at least more engaging ims be done in our lms i'm talking of soul yes it can and hopefully it can also help out in yours so let me introduce to you some features that we have in our lms that will help our teachers produce a more engaging set of content and i hope all all of you could also get some ideas from this one okay so by the way we we will just um we will just focus more on four factors that could um that could prosper or that could help us develop better you know, better and sound um, student engagement. So it's micro learning. And then we have managing screen time. Then we have gamify gamifying our content. And then lastly is personalized. No? So it's personalized learning. So how would we be able to do that with online um, platforms or online apps so first is applying micro learning so part of our part of our um, 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 flexible learning uh, flexible learning um, say framework is micro learning you know, micro learning here would which means they are in digital uh, in micro learning digital tools and resources are partitioned into smaller chunks such that there is ease in the uploading and downloading of materials now in here it's also very important to organize the content in logical units uh, it's not just okay it's all here then i will have to present it to to, to you no without um without even having that um organization where um, there is a, a, a flow of um, a flow of, of information in it so um, in each module no um, there it should be organized in a, within a major topic and contains relevant objectives materials and associated activities okay so how is it done now uh, three of these the the ones that i've mentioned at the site videos books lesson folder videos we actually also uh, use youtube in our for us to be able to upload our pre-recorded lectures and then um just place we we could have it placed in such a manner within our virtual classrooms our our videos and then books lessons and folders will 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 show them them to you how it works for our learning management system okay so we start with the video no so for for the video um we do pre-record we, we pre-record our lecture with text-based equivalent format so what does this what does this mean when presenting audio or video include we should include a brief description and information about the length or what what is it what it is all about and then we keep the segments as short as possible you know um it should be from 2 to 15 minutes to help maximize listeners retention or viewers retention you no know? we're not just showcasing whatever it is it's it's content in our field of specialization so we must be able to to at least uh, convey to our students the information that that's needed so strategically chunking content helps students to absorb the information so avoiding information overload and exhaustion meaning if we are used to okay access this access this uh movie so on and so forth or um i have my pre-recorded lecture at 40 minutes so please access it stuff like that if for pre-recorded lectures it's easier it's easier for us to actually edit and make uh it smaller in in um um duration so no matter how many it is within there at least um they would have the time to um have a break between no between between your uh videos okay so also we should cater to the different learning styles of our students so yeah video is a very important 
quite an essential part of our IMs nowadays. But let us also be mindful of the different learning styles of our students. No, so we need to present the content in different formats. So if you might have seen in the in the slide, um, there is the there is that uh, um, video, and at uh, uh, below the video is a downloadable PDF file. So, which means that is a PDF of the slides that was presented during the pre-recorded video. Or, no, um, you could also, or if you can add an audio file too, then that would be better. So, the more formats you could offer for that same content, the better. Okay, so we have books. So in here, no, it's book. It's yeah, it it's somewhat an ebook for 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 those who are familiar with ebooks or very or yeah, it's quite uh, a very popular a, a very popular uh, I am also an ebook. So our ebook here is actually personalized in a sense that um, it's it's it could cater to like a unit. It could cater to a certain topic only. So it would really depend on how you would place the topics within the, the book. Um, books can contain media files. So uh, if you look, um, yeah, it could actually contain media files like uh, visual, uh, mga, uh, mga images, mga, even your infographics in there. It could, it, it could hold that. It could even hold um, videos, no? So, um, they are they are a book may be used to display reading materials for individual modules of study um, as a staff in uh, it could be used as a departmental handbook as I have uh, I will show it the next slide to you know and also for teachers it could be as a showcase portfolio of student work uh, this could actually be um, this could actually be also helpful for those who will be um, having like an accreditation. You could actually have like a virtual office and then use this uh, this feature. No? And then this minimizes students from the monotony of scrolling down. Right? Uh, most of the times, if it's one topic and then parang walang katapusang scrolling, again, I have to mention that. I have mentioned that yesterday. But we are because if that would be the case looking at the if that would be if the students would see that our um our our content is already too long they would be overwhelmed oh my god it would be information overload for me if i sit down and read all of this so it's actually also something that would um let help them to condition themselves that i could just uh choose one or two of these topics and then i could uh go back after a few minutes so there um, the next slide I will I, I'm showing this to you because this is uh, if you click on any of the in any of the um, links on, on on the book it will give you this kind of page so um, you will have this one no so um, you could just click on any of them and then um, you could go to that uh, particular topic or subtopic uh, at the lower right no lower left corner um you could see that there's print book if you click on print book it will generate a pdf file so it's really like an ebook so it's uh it will generate a pdf file so they could actually download it that way okay and then we have next we have a lesson so lesson here is not necessarily um the lesson that we have in our in our yeah in the topics that we have in our in our courses but yeah it was patterned that way because a teacher can use the lesson to create a linear set of content pages no or instructional activities that offer a variety of paths so this lesson activity module enables a teacher to deliver content and or practice activities in interesting and flexible ways. Why? A teacher can use the lesson to create a linear set of content pages or instructional activities. Um, in either case, also teachers can choose to increase engagement and ensure understanding by including a variety of questions, meaning um, the, you could present you could, you could present your subtopic and then after a subtopic, you could have like a quick check no, so it could um, the questions would appear there as well. Um, 
it, you could include a variety, a variety of questions such as multiple choice, matching and short um, answer. Um, that depending on the student's choice of answer also and how the teacher develops the lesson, uh, students may progress to the next page or have to, to be stuck on that page so that he or she could uh, get it right and then the, it will go to the next page. So here, so that is how it would look like this. Uh, the upper portion in here is something that only the teachers could uh, access or could see. Um, this is only for teacher's view. So you could actually also edit for um, for differentiated revisions, no? And then reports would mean if you placed like a quick check, like for example, this one, whenever you're done with a subtopic, you could actually place uh, a few uh, a few questions in there about that subtopic. Uh, maybe it could be like a quiz for you. And then you could actually, as a teacher, you could actually look look into it in reports, meaning you could check their scores in there. Another way is it could actually also um, be helpful if you if you have like reflections and essay essay activities. This could also carry that kind of activity. Um, you could choose that one and then I have to add something because this is something that I also add when I do when I introduce essay um, the essay feature in our learning management system. It's, for example, you have like a problem solving uh, thing that you have to do. All you have to do is let them uh, write their, their solutions in the piece of paper, take a picture, and then they could upload their work in there um, using the essay feature. So this also caters to a lot. No, maybe just, uh, it's a formative, uh, this is a very good um, tool for formative assessments. So um, many uh, quick checks and even your um, problem solving practice or drill, you could, uh, you could, they could, you, the teachers could actually use this one. So in here, lessons may be used for self-directed learning of a new topic, no? But the, you could actually, uh, you could actually open it to them. Uh, not necessarily that everyone has to be in there together. Um, it could be an asynchronous uh, activity, but more or less um, still an online activity. Okay, and then we have our folder. Okay, so it's a folder. So it, it functions really as a folder in such a way that it enables a teacher to display a number of related files inside a single folder. Meaning, for example, for experiments, um, for activities, no, you have your, your uh, answering sheets in there, or you have your, yeah, you have other links in there. So you could actually place all of these, uh, all of these materials within a folder, no, so that it won't really, it won't really be too disorganized within just a page. So a zipped folder may be uploaded and unzipped for display of an empty folder created and files uploaded into it. Um, they could download this folder. So this is a very good um, feature that could be used if the activity could be done um, offline. No, So they could just access their virtual classrooms, download whatever, um, um, whatever, whatever, uh, IMs there's uh, that's been that's there for them to do their, their activity on offline. So there. Uh, for me, um, I've I've used this one especially in um, image editing. So I have like um, images for to start uh, to let them start with the activity. So I just place it there, and also their instructions. I also place it, it their instructions in the form of also their notes. I place it there. So. Um, all lessons in all lessons of mine in image editing, they're placed in a folder. Okay. Then we have, um, this is a very good one. No, uh, I don't know if this is an answer to, to a perennial problem when it comes to student engagement, because um, most of the times the, the students would just skip they won't go through the notes. They won't go through the. Um, they won't go through the initial sets of activities. In they'll just go directly to to the graded activity, no, and opening the notes and so forth. So 
it's like um, they had they didn't go through the whole uh, detail of it. They just want to 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 do the shortcut, no. So what we have in our learning uh, in our learning management system is the restrict access feature feature. So this means that whenever uh, whenever they click on on uh, directly on the like the graded the graded activity they cannot do that do that unless they have gone through or uploaded or submitted from the 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 ones that that they should do before they could access the activity so this is actually something good um better because it could be used also as um the whole topic no, you cannot access, access that particular topic unless you're done with the previous topics. The previous topics. No, it won't open unless you're done with, with all the activities that's required of you in previous topics. So there. So um, this helps them to be engaged with formative activities. Diba? They don't have to go directly to the graded para lang matapos ng lahat. So they should be go, they should it should motivate them to be engaged with the content, with the activity that goes with the content. Okay, so the next few slides will be on managing the screen time. So this will be not just helpful for the Silliman community, but also for everyone else. Uh, I hope this would really, really uh, help us. Uh, a point or two on this one will um, really be, be of help. Okay, so managing screen time. So for the first um, feature for managing screen time, we have to estimate screen time, especially in asynchronous activities. Uh, what we have practiced, some of our teachers have practiced, is um, when we do our learning plan, uh, we also we also indicate in there the number of minutes, at least like an estimate number of minutes that they spend on that particular, be it a video, be it uh, PDF, how, how, what is the estimate, estimated time for them to read the, the PDF, so on and so forth. And even, even including the, even including the, um, the activity, no, as if, as, as you have seen in the screen, uh, even the activities are, um, have a, a time, table no it's it's there's really a, there's really like a suggested time on how many minutes you have to do that particular activity this will also help us teachers not to um not to go beyond no not to go beyond our minutes because we have to be mindful that there are still other classes um other than us so we 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 also tend to be cautious of or conscious of our time when it comes to um, giving it to our students. So we should um, we we advise or we suggest that we should incorporate this type of scheduling and present it to our students prior to the top to to uh, giving giving the topic so that uh, we can facilitate our students to plan out their schedules as well no so they will be responsible in committing to the tasks in the topic we should avoid um, scenarios like oh ayan na ang materials nyo so that's your activity see you on the next topic posting of the next topic parang ganon so um in here it's aside from aside from um communication with your students no uh, you could um you could actually give them more time to even um, um, have their schedule um, fixed or organized as well. So this will let the students be complacent that they could just um, um, download. If you if you do the if you just do that, okay, here are your materials. They will be complacent in just downloading it and then. I will just do that one later on. Scrum, scrum when the deadline is near. No, so um, in here, if you do this kind of, if you do this kind of um, presentation, no, um, it will also help them manage their data. Let's let's be let's be also be practical and let's be realistic. Uh, not all of our students have um, the 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 internet connection whenever. Whenever and wherever they they have they they are no so uh, at least for those who are only on data no so they could actually manage their own schedule and help we could actually help them with their data budgeting their data so uh, sa Monday 
sa Monday pa mag-zoom si sir. So, a 30 minutes lang. So, okay pa ang data ko for this time. So, um, this will be very helpful for them as well. Okay, another one would be group tasks should be synchronous activities. Okay, so um, just so, just so um, we could avoid that the person did not... Um, did not attend our meeting on, on our online meeting or our uh, time to make this activity so we should make it a point that we will do um, collaborative work in synchronous activities okay so in odl we should provide a platform and time to collaborate no so part yon ng presentation ng part na time schedule nyo um, it will be better if that, that that would also be uh you could also provide a platform so um the very popular ones nowadays is of course google docs no um you could have um forum you could have uh, you could make use because this will be like um group activities if you could use like your social media you could actually they or yeah they could actually use that one um that would be good as well. And then um, if you are um, using like Zoom no, or other video conferencing platforms that has breakout features, you could also you could also use that one, meaning they'll be they'll will be together in one in one session, but you have your breakout rooms. So you could do that one. No, you could do that one with your students. And of course, um, Group them ahead before the task. Of course, it, it won't be it would be it won't be so pleasing, no, na, na you will have to make the groups when you are already there in Zoom. No. So students have a varying schedule. So we should also be mindful na the communication network is always a challenge. No. So again, as I've mentioned earlier, that could um, whatever we had uh, scheduled will give them more time to at least also uh, organize their own schedule. So we can introduce our content not just through PDF or uh, yes, uh, videos. They become more engaged with content because they have a personal take no, in their Eureka moments. No? So in here, it doesn't have to be it, it doesn't have to be like um, PDF, they're re reading it alone. You could actually do collaborative work with an activity in order for them to experience and to go through uh, the content. So there. And then the next one is divide the performance tasks into manageable chunks, equivalent to the class time. Yeah, as I've mentioned earlier, we have to be uh, we have to be conscious of our uh, the designated time for us for these students to learn with us, no? Um, usually this, this, kind of, uh, this kind of announcements would be posted, especially for research, um, maybe for um, activities or yeah, for projects, no? There we, we usually just place the deadline, no? The deadline. Uh, most of the times uh, it shouldn't be that way because again, no? The students will be cramming and doing the the that whole thing that you will that you have uh, asked them to do in the last minute. So even if you place the the deadline for all of these things to be passed, you could also give them. Um, it's more or less also chunk um, submissions, no? So uh, you would also give a schedule on which um, outputs to be outputs to be submitted on these uh, on these times or in on this on these dates before the actual final uh, submission date no i've uh for for the senior high school we have uh i could share this one with you also uh like the project it's it's like the final project for the senior high school uh we made it a point that uh it was uh we shared it to them we shared we shared it to them in the opening of the second second quarter, and then they know that they'll be uh, asked to to um, to submit everything before before the final week. But it's actually weekly that they are that they are to pass um, 
the the individual outputs the the, the outputs that's uh, that would comprise the the project so uh, this would be this would also be um, applicable to that one so even if it's asynchronous sessions it should be clear you no know? it should be clear to them also that it's not walang klase time i mean most maybe in the beginning of odl that was that was like their impression if you are not meeting synchronously so it's not well so it's actually walang klase time no it's no we're not meeting today so i'll just play mobile legends or it's lack of time no so they have other things to do while on asynchronous sessions if we just don't have this um follow it's like yeah it's chunking your submissions as well so we have to make it a point to clear to be clear with the deadlines even if they're working on their own okay so give okay so what is afk away from keyboard activities no so uh, especially for for those on odl no um I could understand them that the students have been there from 7 a.m. to as late as 9 o'clock in the evening uh, looking at the screen. So it we should also be considerate in giving them away from keyboard activities. So it's not really the whole time of the asynchronous time, but within our sessions, because there are times no, that all of the synchronous um, schedule because uh, be, will be in a day no will be in a day so um simple activities as look at the sky inhale and exhale for 10 minutes so on and so forth no and then in one whole sheet of paper write an essay about coronavirus something that's um it could not be coronavirus it could be something that's also outside of the topic that you are discussing with them and then um you could just let them copy and paste the fi filing in the submission page or that you provided so um in here uh you uh it's quite challenging um it's quite challenging for me since i'm teaching ed tech and dtl so what i did or what i do is i incorporate reflection activities or even drawing activities for lessons so it's not always digital after all so one uh, activity i had was on um digital footprint so instead of making um it digital in a sense i made it a point that uh their reflection activity was letting them them draw how they see their digital footprint so there and then they just uh, upload it so it's away from keyboard it's part of a away from keyboard activity for them okay so here um we just had two weeks ago we had our final week uh we also advise that we should especially uh especially with uh very long exams we should divide periodical and major long exams in parts no um in our in our university we are given um the normal the normal time is like two hours for for a course on um, midterm and final exams but we could actually have it yeah we could have it shorter and then just place um a few minutes of breaks if you have like more time then you could actually give more time for breaks at least they could recharge or they could just um, look into some of the notes um yeah so they could they they it's also needed in a sense that they won't have um it will it won't be too much screen time for them so you could actually also uh, include that one as um chunking even the exams exams you have you can also offer it to them in in chunks Next one is incorporate alerting activities in your virtual classroom. So um, because I teach um, um, after office hours, it's like 5.30 to 8. Uh, I usually have this kind of um, alerting activities because once I open, especially we, if we're doing um, synchronous sessions, and then when I see my students are already very tired, um, aside from making my synchronous sessions as short as possible i incorporate alerting activities in in their virtual classroom so um what what 
does this do no before they do an activity it's like oh my god we're doing another activity so instead of them having that feeling no we should like let them um recharge or let them have um an icebreaker something like that so um things would be before like this one uh for uh, for us it's still using our um requiring the access no uh, instead of them of you giving the exam right away they should be able to do um at least an activity no a physical activity in order for them to be able to get the release code of the exam so they won't get the password of the exam unless they do this no so stuff like that um um they are not useless activities they are not useless useless activities, I tell you. They are things that would give our students time to recharge and continue with their engagement with the lesson. There, I, it's tested and proven for um, um, a f um, most of us here in Seoul, no? Okay. Another one is we should be giving enough reading time, thinking time, and typing, clicking, type, time during exams no so yes we might be always on the lookout of students cheating during exams and part of it is giving them a very short time to answer a long exam no uh, i saw um i saw my student uh, post in fb um taking any taking a 60 item exam in 15 minutes something like that i don't know if it was something to brag or it was actually a sarcastic post why give me only 15 minutes to take the exam so i usually for me i usually give a one minute uh time per question so if i have like uh 50 items of exam i set it to an hour for them to take because i also give them time to review their work yeah okay so here no speaking of the perennial problem in online exams let's let me introduce to you safe exam browser no so this the perennial problem is we don't we don't want them to be browse or looking or from hopping from one tab or window to another if we're doing an online exam so this is actually a third party app so might as well google it after the session um and then which is available to everyone, uh, to, to SU teachers, oh, no, segue, training on this will be offered within June and July, so please look forward to the schedule. Um, there, uh, the, in here, no, in here, it really simply, no, simply they cannot, they cannot move or they could not go to other pages. Uh, they will be locked in there, no, they, re, they will be locked in there when they take the exam. So only the teacher could give them the unlocking code so so there so luckily for us we will be able to implement this one uh hopefully by the next school year okay another managing of screen time uh, activity is a 20 20 20 which is every after 20 minutes you might want to rest for 20 seconds and look for around 20 20 meters away from you no um, um if you don't have the window inside your office or inside your or inside your home no where you spend your um or when you spend your classes hold your classes might as well this is for you the time to go out and really do the 20 20 20 maybe not just 20 20 seconds but two minutes no so there um this reduces eye strain caused by spending too much time in front of the computer screen so um maybe we are also to benefit from it not just our students but we as well because we are we we just put our we are just really looking into the screen of our laptops for so many minutes so we are also helping ourselves to bury our noses in the laptops for hours so i find it very reasonable and simple you know? very reasonable and simple and in 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 a in in a, in some ways it's it it's uh it was it will be helpful for for us to also ergonomically we stand we go and see and look at other things aside from the screen so there 
Then we have personalized learning. Okay, so personalized learning. We always hear that one. No, we always we have maybe our yeah we have our own definitions of that one. No, also known as personalization. It refers to a diverse variety of education programs, programs, learning experiences, instructional approaches, and academic support strategies. So it's not really um, just um, it's not just really solely focused on content um, that are intended to address the dis the distinct learning needs, interests, aspirations, or cultural backgrounds of individual students. So. Um, we could have we could actually apply this one this is quite challenging to to come into reality to perfect right away no but uh this could actually be this could still be done this could this could be done so uh <clears throat> excuse me in seoul we also have what we call personal personalized learning designer wherein um we could make use in order for us to even just address, like for example, reminding our students that they haven't answered, um, they haven't answered like a particular activity and they are addressed personally by their names as what they appear in our learning management system. Uh, but um, um, before we do that, no, what is personalized learning? No, really, depending on who you who you ask about personalized learning, you might hear something like it's adding a role, no, filter to learn so learners only get what they need. No, or it means my team will only create the minimum content requirement. Okay, so you could actually have maybe that kind of perception of personalized learning, but in order to convert it to um, or use it in ODL, um, you you would need no you would need um, the technology or you would need the features within your uh, platform. Okay, so here, like this one, for a personal for our person for our PLD we we call it PLD. Uh, so we we could actually make conditions. We could have events like this one. So for events, it could be individual, it could be for a group, uh, it could be for a graded activity. So these are the events that we could apply our personalized uh, learning design, design feature. And then we have conditions that once they complete an activity, we could actually make like a message them. Um, good, you were, you, maybe you, you submitted early, some, something like that or remind them that they have not done the activity yet or another one is this is a very good one instead of them moving forward because they were not that uh, their their performance in a particular activity or lesson wasn't that good you could actually apply this feature so that uh, they could repeat the essentials in that particular topic before they go to the next topic and as simple as um, welcoming them in class in the first day of classes welcome so um, I think I have uh, uh, that one here so this is like um, a welcome a welcome note to me if I enter this particular excuse me this particular um, classroom no so there's stuff like that even you could actually make use of this one uh, even if you want because you don't you feel like the students don't check on your announcements and notifications so you could actually make use of the pld so that whenever they enter the classroom or that particular lesson they this um a projected um yeah a projective a projected notice or announcement will be will be in their screens so there so it's really personalized in a sense that um we had feedbacks from our students like yes sir why did you know or yes mom why did you know that i am i am not doing the activity stuff like that because they were sent these messages then we have Yes, the last one is actually gamification. So we gamify, we gamify. This is actually something that's um, maybe a lot of us would say sana all, sana we could we could do that. Sana we have the technology, sana, no? But really, uh, maybe we're just 
yeah, we're just fortunate that we have a set of um, features in our learning management system, but you could actually explore outside. There are a lot that's for free, no? Uh, I know that many of you might, might have already used Kahoot or all those stuff, even for assessments, there are, there are, uh, there are um, applications there where you could actually also uh, incorporate gamification. So the principle is um, it's uh, is the application of a game design elements and game principles in a non-game context. No, so maybe the interface looks like it's a game, or it's very uh, yeah, it's part of conditioning them that learning is fun. No, it can also be defined as a set of activities and processes to solve problems. No, by using or applying the characteristics of game elements. So there are a myriad of um, applications where uh, you could you could actually make use of, especially uh, for elementary teachers or for early childhood teachers. I, I know of uh, some of my colleagues here who have placed URLs so they so the children or the pupils could click on them and do formative uh, activities using um, gamification or a gamif a gamif gamifying app. Okay, so what is a gamifying project uh, concept? So more or less, your goals, your learning, your learning outcomes, your skills, the skills of the students, what you want them to achieve, even the challenges. Uh, that go with the activities on that particular topic. Um, there's also that rewards basis and of course the competition, no? It's a game, no? It's, I mean, the, the interface is a game. So they become competitive when they are into it. And then of course, it actually also helps out in user engagement. So uh, it makes learning fun and interactive as they say. Regardless of your audience or subject matter, the gamification of learning can help you to create exciting educational and entertaining content, really. Um, it's, I don't know if it's bad to say this, but it creates an addiction to learning, no? Addiction to learning, it's really, yeah. It's just like a statement, but if you have, if you had to define you no know, the single most important aim of learning it must surely be to instill the new knowledge in in your learners um, the easiest way or in the best conditions in the best environments and how what more or what more to use than like an app that could let them feel that it's not actually that difficult no um, another rather surprising benefit of gamification is Learning is a natural high it can give us. There's that natural high. No, it gives us the natural high when we, we do gamification. And then um, another one is it gives learners the opportunity to see real world applications. Uh, I have actually also uh, had this activity with uh, my ed tech students. And then it was like evaluating an application that uses gamification um, in student learning and I was just like impressed because they even uh, they even were able to dig on applications that um, that featured mga, mga, uh, it, it, uh, it, there were Filipino topics like mga, mga bugtong so on and so forth there are already there are already apps uh, available um, um, in 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 online no and then they also have they also have it was a different um it was a different app for um history uh you american history it was a different app it was really really a gamified uh yeah it was really for gamif gamification and it was really a very good one and in a way they were immersed in there because they played just like they were in that particular time in history, so something like that. <clears throat> okay, so um, how do we gamify in Seoul? So we have what we call H5P. Um, the H5P activity module enables us to create interactive content such as interactive videos. So what do we, we mean by interactive videos? Uh, we play the video. So for most of the students, um, they just play the video anyway i could just access it later on but within the video after a few 
um, a few minutes, they will be asked a question. No, if their answer is wrong, then they have to go back to that particular segment. No, so they could not go further. They could not go, yeah, they could not go further if they won't be able to answer the question. So this is a very good interactive video style of um, immersing your students into the content. And then question sets, no, instead of just um, the slides, you could also have like a quick check after a few slides. So similar to that one, there's really interaction because uh, your students will have to re re respond or answer some of the things that uh, that's part of um, the activity or the topic. And then drag and drop questions, multiple, multiple choice answers. So again, there. And then in addition to being an authoring tool for rich content, I think H5P enables you to import and export H5P files no so there's uh, you could actually check out h5p i don't know if it's for free but um there is uh there is really on an h5p app or yeah and website and then you could actually also uh incorporate or integrate um videos there you could make your own videos there and then embed it in your own um platform Pradesha. So you add interactive H5P content by creating content using the built-in authoring tool or uploading H5P files found on other H5P enabled sites. So check them out, okay? So uh, I think uh, I could also um, mention this one. So if you're using um, OpenLMS or Moodle, then these are, these are um, the ones that I've mentioned earlier are actually compatible with, with these platforms. So actually that's all for the afternoon. So I would just end it with this saying from Elizabeth Barkley that student engagement is the product of motivation and active learning. So again, no, um, active learning would not mean just giving them the content without even uh, them having to having at least um, immersed or engaged in the content through interactive learning. It is a product rather than a sum because it will not occur if either of those elements is missing. So thank you very much. I hope that we have imparted to you things that you would be able to use in your own um, journey, no? on your own journey of uh, whatever it is. Maybe it's ODL, Maybe it's blended learning or maybe it's modular type of learning. So thank you very much once again and good afternoon. Okay, so. Yes, ma'am, I've got a recording on this one. So hopefully we could post it in our, uh, for those who would want or would need a recording on this one, uh, we will just post it in our, our, um, our website. It's um, soulsu.weebly.com. So you could actually, uh, you could actually look into in there. And then uh, before we, before we go, I, ha I don't see any questions, so might as well no? try to kindly click on uh, the, 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 the link given on the chat box in order for you to evaluate the webinar as well as um, you place your, the, the name that you would want to be placed in your, in your certificate. So that is before we go. So before we go, kindly, I just want to also see our participants, no? Uh -uh. Maybe I have some friends over there. Yes, I really have friends in there. Hi, Doc Myra. Um, yeah. Yes, we have from the University of the Cordillera so that we are really reaching that far. So thank you for thank you for actually um, um, 
attending, yes, to everyone here in Seoul, Sir Palama, who gave me also, thank you, sir, for giving me your, um, for giving me your results for this presentation. Um, Ma'am, Ma'am Lisa, and then uh, Sir Jade, uh, who else? A shout out thou. Sir Dave is in another, yes, I think, is he here? Maybe in another, yes, maybe in another um, webinar. <laughs> yes. So uh, before we go, kindly, can we have like, yeah, can we have, can we sh share our cameras? Okay. Um, also, if we have uh, webinars that we could also cater um, uh, to everyone, no, we could cater to everyone. We feel free to visit our page also in uh, in FB. So we usually place our links in there if uh, we have uh, we have webinars for everyone. So again, thank you very much. Uh, don't forget to click at least yeah click on the uh click on the link so that you could evaluate and we will be able to send to you your certificate for the afternoon so goodbye everyone and hope to see you in another session for um for the love of uh odl student engagement and of course um blended learning so thank you all bye bye